Chapter One, A Typical Evening. It was evening and a typical scene was taking place in number one dump edge, Witchway Wood. Supper was over and Witch Ponwithy was slumped in her armchair eating toffees and watching Hugo, her hamster familiar, wash up. The only sounds were of clinking plates and a bit of tuneless humming from Hugo and a lot of vigorous noisy chewing from Ponwithy. Suddenly the chewing stopped. Hugo, said Ponwithy, urgently but indistinctly. Hugo, I geek! Was this some sort of new language? Hugo turned and looked at her. Ponwithy was sitting bolt upright, pointing at her mouth with a strange expression, sort of alarm but sheepish at the same time. What? I geek! I geek! Go, 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 go. Her teeth were stuck together. What again? Mm. Ponwithy rolled her eyes and waited for help. Hugo dried his paws on a tiny tea towel. It's the last time I do this, he warned. He scrabbled in a drawer, took out a fork and a small hammer and advanced briskly on Ponwithy, who quailed. With a hop and a jump, he was on her shoulder. Turn head, he instructed. Open up. Ponwithy turned to face him and nervously bared her teeth. He positioned the fork and brandished the hammer. Ready? Mm -hmm. ah! Ponwithy gave a cry as her newly freed jaws sprang open. Oh, oh that's better. What a relief. What I tell you about eating toffees, scolded Hugo, clambering down. But they're all I've got left. I've eaten all the crunchy ones and the soft centres. That whole pack of sweets, but I only get them this morning. So? Oh, that's so greedy, tutted Hugo. After great big supper, too. Paul well, Withy had indeed had a big supper, four greasy helpings of skunk stew, no less. And now on top of all that, she was eating sweets. Or would be if she hadn't run out. Hopefully she fished around in her cardigan pocket and with a glad little cry produced something green, fluff-covered and frog-shaped. Oh, oh, look, a, a hoppy jumper. She peered down, picked off the fluff, popped it in her mouth and crunched. Ooh, I love these, I do. I could sit here and eat them all night. I thought you were going out, said Hugo. You say you're going to visit Sharkadder. Did I? Well, I'm not. I've broken friends. Oh, yeah. Hugo didn't sound all that surprised. Which Sharkadder was pong with his best friend? They argued a lot, though, so they frequently weren't speaking. One day, best friends, the next worst enemies. It was hard to keep up. She wouldn't answer the door, explained Pongwithy. Last time I called. I know she was in there, though, crunching sweets in the dark. Didn't want to share, I reckon, so I'm not speaking. She just doesn't know it yet. So go round and tell her, advised Hugo. How can I tell her if I'm not speaking? Right note. Can't be bothered too far to walk. Flies in if you're so lazy. Take broom. The broom, who had been mournfully drooping in a corner, straightened up and looked desperately keen, like a puppy who's been promised a walk. It hadn't been flown for ages and it was terribly bored, just hanging around collecting cobwebs. A brisk fly would be just what the tree doctor ordered. Don't want to said Ponwithy. I want to lie around and eat sweet things, like cake. Fetch me some cake. 